I lived in a very old home. I'm talking built in the 1700s and protected under the US historical register kind of old. And the dude who built it was super rich. So it's a big old white house, very The Conjuring-esque. I lived there most of my childhood, along with my parents and three older siblings. Okay, on with the tale. I often played alone because my older brothers didn't want to play with their little sister, who's years younger than them. So naturally, I spent a lot of time upstairs or in the library of the house. There were certain rooms that just had really good vibes, like nothing but happiness in there. There was also a small B&B type room upstairs, and my mom used to, to store her extremely realistic portraits. Yeah, you felt watched there. But then, in contrast, there was the basement. Cliché, I'm aware. Occasionally, I'd visit my dad. Skeptic, says a lot of things like, it's bullshit until I experience it. Down there in the basement, as he had a small workshop. I hated that damn basement, though. Whenever I would walk down there, it's as if something was ever so slightly pushing me back up the stairs to safety. I felt like someone was always watching me down there, almost waiting for me to get just a little closer. Like I mentioned before, rooms in that house were either great vibes or, heck no, I'm out. One such room was the parlour. Important, I promise. It just felt very cold, strict and harsh. Fast forward to years later. My mother is trying desperately to sell the house. We moved for my dad's job across the state. Everyone who even rented it was out of the house a few months later. One day, while she was showing the house, she brought me along. We are very close. It's not unusual for me to go with her when she's showing houses. I was chilling in the kitchen when my phone died. I forgot the charger. Anyway, I spot a binder on the table. Now, this is my mom's thick boy binder of all the tenants who lived in this house since the 1700s. I saw a tab labeled deaths and horror enthusiast me was morbidly curious. Apparently, a small girl had died in my room of pneumonia, I think. Okay. However, a man had also hung himself in the damn basement. I think, all right then, that explains the vibes. I read a little further, and this was an awful man. Gambled away his savings, avid racist, drank a lot. And remember how I said the library had great vibes? Yeah, an apparently really nice woman used that as her study to teach young girls. Pretty dope. She also died in the house. The parlour? A very strict, old-school woman apparently had an aneurysm in that room. Jinkies. A year later, after countless rejects from prospective buyers, my mom decides to have the house cleansed. The woman comes. She was like a spiritual white buffalo type cleanser. She says that, without knowing about prior deaths, there was an evil in the basement actively trying to do us harm. However, she said it was countered by a good spirit, a woman. But she says it was the spirit of our family, someone we were very close to. I ask if it could be my grandmother who died of cancer. I was extremely close to her. The spiritual cleanser woman said that yes, it was very possible. So to make an already long story short, she cleansed the house. Apparently, the evil in the basement was very old and very weak. She also said something very interesting. She said that it was years since the house had had a family with children running about and bringing life into the place. The house loved us and didn't want to let go of the only family it had in years. This was a few years back, so I can't really remember what came after it, only that we eventually sold the house. A family with young children a few years ago, and I thought it was the end of it. Last week, my mom and I were driving through our old town to visit a school when we thought it would be nice to visit our old neighbours, who my parents are still very close with. We passed our old house and just... Our mouths dropped open with horror. The paint was peeling, the yard was patchy and dead, and the windows were broken. We drove around the block and the beautiful wooden fence was half torn down and the backyard was covered in sawdust and litter. We pulled up to our neighbour's house and she told us that the family had moved out and some influential couple was trying to remodel it but gave up because it was too hard. 
Without giving away my location, I want to say that that house was the most gorgeous piece of art I have ever seen. It was three stories with deep white paint, an ornate fence, a purple door, a small wood in the back, and a garden that looked straight out of a storybook. Or at least it did when my family lived there. My dad and mom kept that house as sharp as possible in the decade we lived there. My dad taught me the importance of keeping the fence, which bordered an intersection, clean and neat, and how to safely pick up the empty bottles and cigarette butts. My mom grew gorgeous flowers and rinsed out the bird bath every Saturday. My brothers would mow the lawn every weekend, and my dad always had something to fix or paint to keep everything looking great. Thanks to my parents teaching me and my brothers the importance of having a clean, tidy yard and house, I grew up in a place that looked like a fairy tale. Now, the house is unfucking recognisable. The yard is covered in bottles and butts. The fence is half torn down. What paint has left is chipping and peeled. And the lawn looked like it was completely overgrown before it died. My mother's flowers that bordered the front walk are dead. The wood, which offered a much needed area to get away and was the setting of many areas of playing pretend, is all gone. The sundial, which is extremely important in my mother's culture, the one we left for the new family, was broken. What's ironic is that the sundial had an inscription that asked, my face marks the sunny hours, what can you say of yours? Not much, apparently. I'm just so heartbroken and upset. I can't even imagine what the spirits in the home are feeling. So last night, I woke up at 3.30am to a really weird sound. It sounded almost like a woman exhaling sharply. I thought it was just my mom, like maybe she fell asleep on the couch and she's snoring. But the sound kept going and I realised I didn't hear an inhale, just the exhale. And it would be at really weird intervals, like there would be the sound and then a two or three second pause before the next one. And then after that, it would stop for longer and then restart. Just this wheezy ass exhale. My cat, who usually sleeps on my desk or next to my bed, was standing next to me on my bed, totally alert. Like, hackles raised, tail up kind of thing. So, I did the dumb white person thing. And I decided to get up and find what the hell was making that noise. I was about halfway down the stairs when the direction of the sound changed. It was no longer coming from down the stairs, but to my left, up the stairs, where my siblings' rooms are. I rolled my eyes, thinking they were just watching a stupid-ass TikTok or something. So I walked back up the stairs to try and see who was making the noise by listening at their doors. As I got to my oldest brother's room, the location of the sound fucking changed again, this time to right in front of my face. I don't know how else to describe it. It was like there was someone right in front of me, but I couldn't feel them or see them. Just a wheezy, inconsistent exile, right in front of my face. I flinched and jolted backwards, and started to hyperventilate as I backed up to my room and shut the door. I'm not prone to auditory hallucinations. I'm not currently on any medications with hallucinatory side effects. I was hydrated, I had eaten, and had gotten a good night's sleep for the past week. I don't understand any other explanation. We just moved. I really don't want any more creepy ass shit. Y'all, it happened again. In broad daylight. This afternoon I was doing work from home, studying for finals and shit, when my cat, who was sleeping by my feet on the bed, suddenly jolted her head up. I figured someone pulled up in the driveway and she was just hearing that. But after five minutes, I pulled out my headphones and walked to the window in my hallway that looks over the driveway, and no one was there. I yelled, hello? Figuring one of my siblings got dropped off by a friend. I searched the house, but no one was there but me. So I went back upstairs to finish a packet, and sat down and turned my music up. I heard the fucking wheezy breath again, through my headphones which were blaring loud-ass punk rock. I couldn't have been a strange sound in the actual song, because I was listening to the Sex Pistols, which is just a band. Drums, electric, bass, vocals, etc. I asked my siblings if they had heard anything weird the other night, and all said no. 
something really fucking creepy happened. So this morning, I'd cleansed my work clothes needed to be washed. But my mom had a separate load getting ready. So I headed to the guest house to do some washing. My whites were looking a little grungy, so I opened a closet door and stepped inside to grab the bleach, when it slammed shut behind me. I whipped around and started jiggling the knob, but something was blocking the door. Thank Christ I still had my phone, so I called my mom to let me out. When she let me out of the closet about five minutes later, she was really confused. I was on the inside, but the child lock on the outside had been snapped shut. Keep in mind, this couldn't have been accidentally. You need to press down on the lock to secure it. We're trying to get the house cleansed now. I currently live in a split-level house with my girlfriend, my grandma, my mom, and my brother. My girlfriend and I have the downstairs area to ourselves while they have the upper floor. When we first moved here, we didn't pay much attention to the weird stuff that happened, but over time, things became more noticeable. We have this back room that used to be the reptile room and office. When that was still the case, we would hear banging in the room like one of the tank lids were being pushed on and then snapping back down. I assumed this was one of the snakes attempting an escape. However, I soon realised this was not the case as I started going to check as soon as I heard the noise. All the snakes would be in their hide boxes. They're all too big to get back into their hide boxes this fast, so there's no way it was one of them. During this time, we would also hear stuff being dropped or knocked over, but when we would check, nothing had been moved. There was an incident where I had gone to the kitchen upstairs while my girlfriend was taking a shower. She didn't know I was up there at the time. She had gotten out and while she was drying off she heard my voice calling her into that back room and the sound came from that room. When I came down the stairs as she walked out the bathroom she was visibly startled and confused. A few months ago I converted that room into a kitchen and moved the animals to a different room. We still hear noises but things started happening in other rooms. We have a sliding glass door to the backyard in our living area. The lock is busted, so we keep a PVC pipe in the track so it can't be opened from the outside. We very rarely use this door for anything and put the pipe back every time since someone had to try to break in once. I have come to notice that sometimes the pipe is just not in the track. I've asked everyone in the house if they have used this door for any reason, and no one has touched it. We started putting a brick on top of the pipe, and it doesn't seem to move anymore. Since that stopped, if I'm awake in the middle of the night and it's quiet, the deadbolt on the front door will loudly unlock itself with no sound of a key. Sound is oddly amplified where the front door is, so anything touching that door is very audible from our living area including when someone puts a key in the lock to unlock the door. I had heard it once when I was at the bottom of the stairs. I went to check and it was definitely unlocked. My mom and grandma never leave this door unlocked. Doesn't matter who's home, they lock the door when they close it every single time. Something I've also noticed is that my things tend to go missing and reappear in odd places. Usually it's things I use often, like my ceramic travel mug, but sometimes it's also things I rarely touch. I hadn't had a problem with this until we had moved in there. Something I didn't know until recently is that my girlfriend had been experiencing things touching her. Our computer desks used to be in our bedroom. When she would sit at her desk, sometimes she would feel something touch her leg. She said it felt like someone put their hand on her thigh and squeezed for a moment, then let go. It usually happened when I was asleep, and she was worried about freaking me out by telling me, but I had a similar experience when she was at work. I wasn't feeling well, and ended up crashing for a bit. I woke up to what felt like someone grabbing my ankle, but when I looked, no one was there. Once we moved the desks, the touching stopped. I'm assuming because we're not in the bedroom much anymore. With all this, I wanted to do a cleansing in the house with some sage, but I have a bit of a problem. My grandma has COPD. Burning stuff like that can cause her serious problems and she doesn't use breathing treatments. She only has an emergency inhaler. I don't think anything bad will come of all this, but it's still concerning. 
Any suggestions? My grandfather passed away in October. It was rather sudden, COVID, and I took it especially hard as I was very close to my grandparents on that side of the family. My grandmother passed away in April 2017, but suffered for dementia 10 years prior. I guess because her mind was so gone, she was hard to mourn. But to me, it felt like she was survived by my grandfather. Like as long as he was around, it still felt like she was too. The cemetery they're both now buried in is only a mile from my house, so I frequently drive past it. Whenever I'm alone in the car, I say out loud, I love you guys, and blow a kiss in their direction. But if my son is in the car with me, I just say it in my head and keep going. Today, my son is with me and I'm sitting at the stoplight staring towards the cemetery and saying in my head, I love you guys, like always. Then my son says out of nowhere, Hey mom, I want to listen to that song that says, We love you, we love you. See, we haven't listened to that song he brought up in months, but it was the perfect moment. Felt like my grandparents were reminding me they're still here with me and they love me and they hear me. It brought tears to my eyes. When I was 12 or 13, me, my grandma and my cousin stayed on the Queen Mary for a night or two. The ship is apparently haunted because of how many people died on the ship during its prime days, mostly due to travelling passengers catching illnesses and dying on board. We were told about ghost sightings and were recommended the ghost tour by the receptionist. But my grandma's religious and scoffs about anything like that. That night that we checked in, she and my cousin went to bed early while I explored the ship. It was pretty dead and I was basically the only guest wandering the ship. It was eerie because it wasn't even that late at night. Forgive me, I'm unfamiliar with the actual terms for each specific deck. I went outside to the top deck and just walked around a bit. And then suddenly, I felt someone was near me. I had this urge to get away from it, so I started walking in the other direction. For some reason, my instincts are telling me to run, so I did. After running to the other side of the ship, I turn around and see someone. It was a man. I assumed he was an employee. But after looking closer, he was wearing very old clothes. Like clothes from that time period that the Queen Mary was an active running ship. He had a moustache and called me crazy, but he had a green aura to him. Like he was glowing a subtle green. I know how crazy it sounds, but I swear this is what I saw. I then saw actual employees on the ship and walked towards them, then went back to my room. I always considered myself religious and never even entertained the thought of spirits or ghosts, but that night had me questioning. Maybe because of my beliefs, he the spirit slash ghost, was naturally drawn to me. Maybe he wanted to be seen. I don't think it was a living employee because they wore modern day uniforms and he was wearing old clothes. Also, he was glowing. I don't know how else to explain it. I live in New Zealand. I'm 18, male, and the house I live in is roughly 112 years old. Now, this is going to be scuffed and terrible writing. I'm not good at it. I do apologise, but do enjoy it. I'll talk about my room first, as it's the most interesting. So my room is a bit of a creepy place. Now the spirit that seems to be attached to me, I call Bill. Now Bill is, uh, how do I put it? Nice, but strange spirit. I always feel constantly watched by them. The only free time I get from them is during the dirty. At least they give me personal space. Or else in public. But if I dare talk about Bill, they'll make themselves known even right now. As I'm talking this. And I can feel Bill near me. Now up to encounters I've had quite a few encounters. Orbs, figures, whispers, breathing. But never objects moving or anything physical. Now, I have proof of orbs through sending random stuff to my girlfriend, but i got to figure out how to send or attach them anyways. As I said, I've captured quite a few videos, but I've only been able to recover one video. The rest have seemed to kind of vanish from existence. 
On many accounts, I've seen figures jolting past me or standing in the corner of my eye. They seem too shadowy and dark with no details through just that alone. Possibly a shadow person, whispers and breathing. These are rare, but when they happen, it's very clear. I've heard my name be called next to me. My girlfriend's name are the only two things I've heard it say. Breathing, similar situation. I've only heard it breathe in my ear or by my computer desk, which I'll now explain a theory. Now, none of this ever started to happen until I got this computer desk for $10 off one of my mum's co-workers. It's a very nice desk, by the way. I believe it's possibly attached to the desk for some reason. But I don't want to get rid of it as the spirit has done nothing to harm me and I'm too afraid to tell it to leave. Something that just came to me a few nights ago, I was laying in bed watching YouTube and I saw something in the corner of my eye and I thought, oh, here we go again. When I looked to see what it was, it was a glowing white head just peeping out looking at me. And I stared at this thing for a good three seconds, but it felt like three years before it slowly descended down under what I believed to be my bed. And from that night, I've been terrified to look under my bed at night unless I've got lights on and I got a protection stone on me. I've also seen dark hands come on from up under the bed. So frankly, I don't know what to do, man. Anyway, this is getting real long. Next part, the hallway. Now, the hallway is a part that scares the living fucking shit out of me. There's an old dude who chills in that hallway, but don't be fooled. He puts extreme pressure on your entire body. Even my girlfriend, who's dealt with her own demon for many years, is terrified of him. My mum was attacked by him when we first got the house. My dad, who denies the existence of them, has felt pressure. On top of that, a very dark shadow figure peeking from the hallway has been seen a few times by me. It's just a bit of a scary situation. I do have a sister, but I've never asked her about the hallway as she's still a bit young. My sister's room... This one will be short as I don't have much to say. This room is basically anti-male. I've walked in that room many times and the only thing I felt in that room was pure distaste towards me. Not even my dad will walk in there. Only my mum or sister can go in. Finally, the hider. The hider is a nickname for a certain ghost who hides constantly. Their presence is barely felt, but if I focus enough, I can feel them and know they fear something in that house. I think it's the hallway ghost. Other than that, not much else is known really. I came back to my hometown for the holidays. It's a fairly rural area with woods and everything is peaceful. I love going to pick wild berries and I was doing just that when I encountered the first paranormal experience of my life. It happened in the backyard of my neighbour. There are wild berry shrubs there. Here are a few details so the story makes sense. I used to have an old man who lived alone as my neighbour and he was a very kind person. He used to give us those berries as candied sweets. He passed away due to cardiac failure while I was in high school and his house has been empty ever since. I wanted to make those sweets for my family as a holiday com comfort food and thus went to his place. Now, as he passed a few years ago, there was a lot of undergrowth and wild grass in his yard, and everything was messy. I cleared some of the growth and made way to the shrubs, cleaning the place as much as I could, thinking about how clean he used to keep everything. All this time, I had a feeling that something was off, and that I was being watched, but I brushed it off. I was two minutes into picking, when I heard my neighbour's voice. I'm sure it was him saying I should be more careful and pick up the rake immediately. It was as if I was fainting, everything was fast or slow. I can't really explain that. But as soon as I picked the rake, some homeless man tried to stab me with a knife. I used the sharp end of the rake to scare him off and kept shouting loudly. He ran off. After I gathered myself, I had tears but couldn't shake off the smile I had. It was eerie, but I was unharmed. I think I'm going to clean my neighbour's place. I owe him that much. I slept in my car last night due to trying to avoid bothering my roommates by coming in the middle of the night. 
I drove to an empty parking lot, which has a beach in the woods, and it's winter. Snow and minus nine degrees Celsius. While I was there, I put the car in park and put the daylight LEDs on. They dim once the car is in park. There was a building which hosts the beach activities, I guess. I would look there and see movement from the corners of my eyes. I looked into one of the windows and thought what I saw to believe was an old man standing and moving slightly, but I doubted this. I got really scared in my car. I felt something was staring at me. I put up my windows and put on some light techno music. I could hear noise from outside my car, footsteps walking around. It would then stop, then my whole car would shake. Footsteps lasted all night. I could see shadows in my peripheral vision all night. At one point, it sounded like they were trying to communicate, but it was only coming in like a howl. At one point, I looked out my passenger window and saw a six-inch approx, skinny white, transparent figure, ghost, flying upward diagonally at a relatively quick velocity. I saw shadows all night, heard noises around my car, the odd thump on it too. I even saw a very distinct dog-like animal, but only its skeletal outline was semi-visible, transparent, moving around outside briefly. Something weird happened when I was camping and have no explanation. So we're out camping in the desert one day after Thanksgiving. It's a big group of people. I'd say about 10 families, all with RVs, motorcycles, outdoor riding toys, kids, etc. Me and my family were poor, so we had a tent. Inside my tent is a heater, two air mattresses on opposite side of the tent. So one far left, then space for moving around and the other far right. And our clothes, shoes, etc. Everyone's drinking and having fun. My daughter and my friend's daughter are asleep in my tent, two girls under five. One kid is on each air mattress and the portable camping heater is on. So we're outside having some drinks, music is going, people are still doing crazy stuff with the motorcycles, etc. I'm by the bonfire when in the corner of my eye, I see a man go into my tent. I immediately say, who the fuck went into my tent? To which my friend says, what? But by this time, I'm in fight or flight, which means fight for me, so I sprint. And I mean sprint to my tent and bust open, trying to see what idiots went in my tent where two little girls are sleeping. Everyone else was supposed to be by the fire. When I got inside, I saw smoke, smelled horrible, and saw that a blanket fell over the heater that was next to the air mattress my daughter was sleeping in. The blanket was burning, y'all, like on fire with two kids inside. I ripped the blankets off the heater and threw it out of the tent, ventilated the crap out of the tent, all while the two babies slept peacefully, completely unaware or bothered. Had I not got on there when I did, I honestly think the tent would have caught fire with my kids in there. I'm glad I made it in time and everything was fine, but who the fuck did I see go into my tent? I asked everyone and no one saw anyone go in. Everyone was accounted for. Who did I see? If I hadn't seen this man go in, I would have checked on the kids. I think about this almost every day. I started college in late August of 2012. My freshman dorm was by my own room attached to a common room with three other bedrooms attached. I arrived one day before the rest of my roommates and was watching Ghost Hunters alone in the common room. Out of pure boredom, I mimicked the hunters on the show and said out loud, If there's anybody else in this room, knock on my door three times. Immediately, I heard three knocks. I freaked out, of course, went for a walk and chalked it up to my mind playing tricks on me. As the first couple of months progressed, weird things like this kept happening, but I chose to ignore them to keep my own sanity. One of two main experiences I couldn't ignore happened right before winter break in mid-November. I was laying on my side in my bed, sleepless and sober, staring across my room. Out of the blue, I see two white orbs the size of baseballs appear in front of my dresser, suspended in the air side by side. I was in a state of awe, staring at them. 
All of a sudden, they start circling each other in a dance progressively for about a minute before they merge and become one big orb and then start to fade away. I cannot remember how I reacted after they faded away. After the orb occurrence, unexplainable activity became more of an everyday event. Every single night there was a scratching noise right by my door. It sounded like somebody scratching their arm but louder and it lasted all night. I would see and hear my door fling open in my peripheral vision, only to see it still closed once I turned my head. Electronics shutting off randomly and radio volume erratically increasing and decreasing. I learned to ignore these things once again to keep my sanity. I also told a few people, including my sweetmates, but they would just laugh it off and thought I was loony. The second major event that I couldn't ignore happened in the early spring 2013. I never slept there again after this. Once again, laying on my side, sleepless but eyes closed, this time trying to relax around 2am. All of a sudden, my phone lit up next to my bed and I opened my eyes to see no notifications. I immediately get an eerie feeling with chills down my spine and then hear my door handle jig. Next thing I see is a black but translucent figure of a little girl with pigtails coming through my door on the other side of the room. She skips over to my bed, swipes at my phone as it's still lit up and skips away back through the door. My phone stayed in place next to my bed. I'm in a state of complete shock at this point and my entire body is paralysed in fear. Instantaneously, a tall figure of a man, at least six foot, appears standing still next to my bed in my line of sight. He was no more than two feet away from my head. I was staring at the side of his body and he was facing the direction of the end of my bed. At first in slow motion, he starts running in place. He then starts moving his arms and legs progressively faster until his limbs are a blur. My heart is beating out of my chest as I'm realising I need to nope the fuck out of there. As the man is still there, I rip my covers off, grab my phone and sprint out of my room and go down the hall to my friend's apartment. She was French, a big sceptic and always up late so I knew she would listen to my story. After I calm down, she convinces me to go back in the room because she thinks I'm bullshitting. We decide to sit down on my bed with all of the lights on so she can prove to me how delusional I am. Within seconds, a loud bang rattles against my wall, as if somebody has thrown their body against the wall. We both jolted up and got the fuck out, and from then on, I slept on her couch. Fast forward to tonight, almost ten years later. I meet up with an old mutual friend of one of my sweetmates and catch up with him over a beer. He would sometimes crash on our couch back in college when he was too tired to walk home. I brought up for the first time to him that I stopped sleeping in my room because it was haunted. His eyes widened and he told me one night he slept in my bed because I wasn't there and he was sick of the couch. He told me he didn't believe in ghosts until this night and I asked him what he saw and he said there were two spirits he saw. My heart sinks and I start losing my breath from the memory of that room being brought up from suppressing it for so long. He described the same scratching noises and his phone not being able to charge. Then, in the corner of the room appeared two figures of a tall man and a girl facing him. He jumped out of bed and never slept there again. I told him I saw the same two figures of a girl and a man and we both freaked out and had full body chills. I thought that something was wrong in my brain and I had some sort of hallucinations until tonight. I now, without a doubt, believe in spirits that haven't moved on. Almost 20 years ago, I was in the midst of a divorce and I'd been living with my parents for a few months. I managed to buy myself a cute little two bedroom Victorian house for me and my 13 year old daughter and eventually moving day arrived. Over the five months I'd lived with my parents, I'd been buying new things for my home. Essentials, saucepans, crockery, towels, bed linens, etc. I didn't want anything from my ex, so everything I had, I'd bought new. So, moving day came, and I had beds for me and my daughter coming from a local furniture shop and washing machine, a fridge, and a sofa. 
everything else I got into my car and drove from my parents' house with boxes full of new pots, etc. And my mum was at the house unpacking and putting things away. The delivery men put my bed upstairs and my mum decided to put my bedding on for me. So she opened the new sheets and duvet cover and made my bed. As she was brushing her hands over the newly made bed, she found a sewing needle which she pulled out of my bedding. She gave it to me and said it must have been in the packaging from the factory, which we all agreed seemed feasible. The following weekend I stripped my bed, washed it and dried it outside on the washing line. I fetched it in late afternoon and remade my bed. When I went to bed that night, I could feel something inside my pillowcase. I thought it was a small twig that had got caught in the washing whilst I was on the line near some shrubs. I put on the bedside lamp and inside the pillowcase was another needle. I put it on the bedside cabinet and decided I'd worry about that tomorrow. The next day was Sunday and as always I went to my parents' house. For lunch, I told them about finding a second needle in my bed. The following weekend, I was busy as always, asking anyone who works all week and they all seemed to spend the weekend doing laundry, grocery shopping and cleaning. I was no different. I cleaned downstairs and was heading upstairs to clean the bedrooms and bathroom. Now, on my stairs there were wooden panels, wainscoting. It looked nice and it hid the uneven plaster work. The top of the wainscoting was about waist high and was about an inch deep. Just wide enough to gather dust. So I wiped the wainscoting as I cleaned downstairs. Then, when I went upstairs, I came down with a duster in my hand and wiped it over again. After running up and down stairs a few times, bringing laundry down, taking the clothes up, emptying the bathroom bin, etc., I finally finished, but I'd wiped that wainscoting ledge every time I'd pass it. I guess I was just so house proud of my own little lovely place. Anyway, Final trip downstairs and I notice another sewing needle. Sitting on the top of the wainscoting ledge, there was a needle. Now, this is getting decidedly weird. So I added it to the other two on my bedside table. The next morning, I look at the three needles and think, wait until I tell mum about this one. And I notice there's not three needles as there should be, but four. Weirder and weirder. Several years later, my daughter was by then an adult with a baby of her own and I was moving across the country, so I sold my darling house and obviously packed up. In a cupboard by my back door, there was my boiler, and I kept a few folding garden chairs and some old curtains. I pull out the curtains and see for the first time ever a tin, like a biscuit tin or a Quality Street chocolate tin, and inside there was some unfinished embroidery, and suddenly all the needles made sense. So I pack the tin with the unfinished embroidery, and decide I'll make it my job to finish it. But I never did finish it, as when I unpacked at my new house, the tin had vanished. Maybe this isn't the creepiest of stories, but every word here is exactly how it happened. I never felt creeped out or spooked in my house though. When I was younger, maybe 10 or 11, We lived in a very large old Victorian house. The house had five floors, very long hallways on each floor and old wooden flooring. There were always creepy sounds at night and weird power outages, but that can be attributed to the age of the house. We liked the house a lot. The first incident happened in the attic. We called it the attic, but in reality, it had a family room, a bathroom, a kitchen and a guest room. The third floor stairs have a landing that leads to the attic door, which takes you up a flight of stairs and you come up to a long hallway on your left that leads you to the family room at the end of the hall and a large window on your right that the moonlight comes through. When you enter the family room, there's a spiral staircase that takes you to the top floor, which is just a dark small room that we never used except for storage. One night, I was playing with my toys on the stairs of the third floor right next to the door that leads to the attic. We had a cat at the time. As I was playing, I heard scratching in the attic. Not wanting to get in trouble for her destroying a couch, I'm the one who asked for the cat. I opened the attic door and walked up the stairs to go find her. As soon as I reached the top of the stairs and turned down the long hallway, the scratching stopped and the power to the house went out. 
I was in total darkness. I put my back against the window and slid down and stared down the long hallway, terrified and waiting for the power to come on. As I slid down, I heard a very slow thump, thump. The sound of someone walking down the spiral staircase. The sound is unmistakable because the steps are metal. The sound continued right behind the family door. I heard each step. The step stopped. The family room door moved slightly and immediately I felt this rush come over me. I got so cold and my heart started beating in such a way I felt it actually move my chest. After a few seconds, the door bolted open and something started sprinting down the hallway at me. I couldn't see a thing, but I felt the movement. That feeling you get when something is near you. I remember that was the first time I ever felt like prey. My heart was in my throat, but I screamed as loud as I could. And as soon as it got close to me, the rush went away and cold left my body. My parents ran up the stairs and after I told them what happened, they went to the breaker box and came up and looked all around and found no one. Nothing. But the handle on the family door room was broken and the window behind me was cracked. It's possible I cracked it when I put my back to it to slide down, but it was cracked at a height I couldn't reach with my body at the time. The basement was the worst part of the house. It was one of those dreary, unfurnished concrete floor basements. It was as large as any first floor of a house. I mean, truly massive. When you open the door, the short stairs look like you're going into a cellar. And when you come down the stairs, you have to walk forward for several steps in the dark to find the string of the light and pull it. Even then, that light only illuminates the immediate area, not the rest of the basement. There are several lights like this the further you go, each one with a string to pull. To the left is the rest of the basement. It goes all the way back and then there's a cove tucked to the left where the dogs sleep. It's out of the line of sight. Since there's a small window in the cove, it casts this bluish black light in the morning and nights from the moon. One early morning around 5am, I had to go feed the dogs since my dad was out of town. I hated when it was my turn because the basements always gave me terrible feelings. I would always call the dogs to meet me at the stairs so I didn't have to walk down the stairs in the dark alone. I called for them, waited, and called again. They didn't come and I heard no sound. I walked down the stairs in the dark and held my hand out to find the string to pull the light. As I reached for the light, I saw movement at the end of the basement near the cove and my breath got caught in my chest. I pulled the light fast and the ball popped with a quick burst of light. At that moment, I saw a man standing at the end of the basement. He didn't disappear like in the movies though, and I wish he had. In the dark, with a sliver of moonlight from the cove window, I could still see him standing there with his back to me. He didn't move at all, and his head was cocked to the left in such an unnatural way, at an angle where his neck had to be broken. He was probably 40 feet away from me. As I stood there trying to force a scream through my throat that felt like it was locked up, I couldn't look away. And in those few seconds I stared, I saw it was less of a man and more of a thing. It had white translucent skin and looked gangly. I pissed myself standing up, I lost all control. I think the pee snapped me out of it because as I felt the warmth on my leg, I started backing away and as I backed away, it sprinted to the left towards the cove where the dogs were, and I ran upstairs. Chipped my tooth falling into the stairs, still chipped to this day. I slammed the door shut and locked the latch. I called my mom down, and we called the dogs from the top of the stairs. No response. We went down there, and both dogs were huddled together in the corner of the cove, and it took five minutes to get them to leave the corner and come upstairs with us. We had to pull them apart and walk them with us holding their collars. The last one is short and simple, but probably the worst experience I had in that house. In the same basement I had in that, there was a furnace room to the left of the stairs, about 15 feet away from the stairs. It's dark, cramped, and has all kinds of luggage and extra supplies in it. The day before Thanksgiving, we were preparing for our family to arrive. 
My mother sent me to get the Thanksgiving table decor or whatever it's called. As I walked down the stairs, I saw the furnace room door was cracked. I stopped dead in my tracks. That door was never left open. We were always told to close it so the dogs don't go in it. Really? My parents made a big deal about it. I stayed on the stairs and stared at the door. I felt the hair on my neck raise and my fists clench out of instinct. As I stare, in the crack of the door, I see half a smile on one eye. The smile was so close to being human, but so far I can't explain it. It was as though something had been observing humans to mimic them, but couldn't get its face just right. As I run up the stairs, I heard the creak of the furnace door opening further, slammed and locked the door, and that was the last time I ever went in the basement. From that point on, my parents never made me go back in the basement again and delegated my basement chores to my siblings. Even though I know that they didn't believe me, it was a nice gesture that I was thankful for. Since we moved, I've never experienced anything abnormal in our houses. I'm 26 now. I never had any issues with the paranormal since then. I like to rationalize by telling myself it was fear and my brain playing tricks on me. But part of me knows it wasn't. I work at a place where people between the age of 15 to 25 go to chat, kind of like a cafe. One night, I was chatting with one of our customers, if you can call them that, and I heard some noise from upstairs. It was weird, because just employees are allowed upstairs. I looked around, just to see my co looking at me. You heard it too, she said. Yes, I answered. Since she had just been here for only five months, and I've been there for three years, I decided I would have to go see by myself what's going on upstairs. So I stood up and started to walk toward the stairs, and then my heart stopped as I saw a shadow in the hallway. I knew I should have to run out of here, but I couldn't. I couldn't let my fear take over my rationalism. So I went upstairs. It was like 8pm, so it was dark, and of course the light switch was in the middle of the hall, and I forgot my phone downstairs. I forgot to mention where I work, during the day, there's a school for adults, and it's upstairs. So, walk past the classroom that is next to the light switch. I'm trying to find the light switch against the wall, when suddenly, I felt a cold hand touching mine. I was so scared I couldn't scream. I couldn't even move. That's when I felt a breath near my heart, and then someone whispered my name right next to my heart. That's when I screamed and ran downstairs. I went back where everyone was, and my co-worker looked at me shocked. The place was now empty, and I looked at the clock and saw that it was almost 10 p.m., which is the time that we usually closed. My co-worker said to me, I was starting to worry, like, what took you so long? I didn't know what to say. I lied to her and told her that I did some paperwork. I've been buried in DIY projects at home due to COVID and trying to cope with a depression from a long-term relationship that just ended. It's not rare to have things go missing in here and I can surely take part of the blame because I've been juggling a lot of things in my mind. But it's not random things that go missing, no. It's always exactly what you need, right when you need it. Very simple examples. Placed an order for pickup and my keys go missing. Normal, right? Uh, how about when you put down your hammer and reach for it again without moving from your spot? But it steps away now. Or having an entire saw that was plugged in go missing, only to be found days later in a random place. I live alone. That This happens almost on a daily basis, and now I just ignore it, since I've got spares of everything. I just laugh it off and say, very funny, you got me, or something to that effect. If I spend more than five minutes looking for whatever disappeared. Sometimes it goes too far and I get mad and scold whatever it is that's fucking with me. I took this attitude after someone told me they felt it was a young girl playing games and she didn't mean any, any harm. Obviously my friend is crazy and weird, but I'm comfortable with the child ghost over some old creep. At first it was scary and sucked. But now I think there's a somewhat healthy relationship and coexistence going on here. 
My ex has also had experiences when she lived here and the new neighbors upstairs already have a story of their own within the first month. One day, one of my projects required me to be up at 6 a.m. sharp to start the next phase, but my power had gone out overnight and I was up late watching videos on my phone. Recipe for disaster. My project was a few months in the making and I would have lost all my work if I didn't get up in time. It was a hot night, so I slept above the covers of my belly with an entire leg hanging off my bed. I'm depressed, I don't care. I lost the boogeyman pulling your leg feeling a while ago. So I was laying on my arms, my left arm was crossed over my chest and my right was across my belly. This is important because I tried to replicate it after I woke up and you can too. It's impossible. So something grabbed my leg and flipped me over so hard that I landed on my back. Still on the bed though. I got flipped like a flapjack or more like a paper triangle football game where you try to hit it to the end of the table and flip it while a piece of it dangles off the edge. I got freaking flipped. I woke up midair and saw my doorway and then the ceiling. As soon as I landed on my back and opened my eyes completely though, I noticed the sun coming out and got up without a second thought. I ran to my project in the other room thinking I overslept. Noticing the lights went out and got everything back on to find out it was 5.55am and I had 5 minutes to spare. I feel like the ghost had my back. I never once felt scared but just a bit creeped out. I've tried to do that flip a few times but I can't go from my belly to my back while laying on both my arms with one leg dangling in one smooth motion. It's impossible. I lived above my aunt and cousins on the second floor of their multi-family house. One Saturday morning when I was about 12, I got up before my mother started her early morning weekend cleaning routine. So I ran downstairs to wake up my younger cousin to play on his N64. She wouldn't fetch me to do chores if I was already all the way downstairs. I played video games with my cousin every weekend, but normally at night time, and we'd play until the next morning. Anyway, I got downstairs that morning and opened the door to their house, and everything was silent but bright. The sun illuminated the entire place like I've never seen before, especially shining out of my aunt's room. It was such a tremendous glow. I started making my way to my cousin's room. I didn't think much of it at the moment though. Both bedrooms are across from each other at the end of the hall, so I was just going to knock on my cousin's door and peek into my aunt's open bedroom to say hi. Before I got halfway there, my aunt walked out, dressed up like she was heading out somewhere. She looked like an angel with the sun beaming behind her and the dress shining so bright. It was a red, tight, what I call a spaghetti strap dress. It was no later than 9am though and this was evening wear. She said, good morning papi, how are you today? We had a normal conversation. I told her I wanted to wake up my cousins and she said, oh, they just went to Blockbuster to drop off and pick up a few more games and movies with their dad a few minutes ago. This was a normal routine for them, which is why I was always downstairs. Normally they did that at night though and I'd go with them, but again, didn't think much of it. At this point, we had walked back towards the entrance but sat on a couch to talk. I didn't want to seem rude and just leave when I didn't find my cousins, so I sat down for a chat. Eventually I got bored and said, okay dear, I'll be back in a few whenever they get back. Gonna go upstairs and check on my mom. I'll see you soon. She smiled, said okay, and we gave each other a kiss on the cheek to say goodbye. I got upstairs and ran right into my mother as soon as I opened the door while she was cleaning. She immediately flipped out and yelled, where the fuck were you doing down there? I told you that's not your house. Don't ever go down there when no one is home. Yeah, okay, I'm winning this one. Told her I just spoke to my aunt so I can't get in trouble. She's downstairs. My mother almost smacked me. Thought I was lying. So I said, let's go down and ask her. Oh, my mother was so game to catch me out in a lie. We went down there, but it's silent and the sun was no longer shining as bright throughout the house. I call out to my aunt and my mother just crosses her arms, picturing the ass beating I'm about to get. No response. I tried again and started searching. My face was turning pale and my mother started to notice this wasn't a game for me. 
She asked me what I did for so long when I was down there, alone. So I told her about my conversation with my aunt. I told her what she said, where we sat and what she was wearing. She was skeptical, but I insisted on calling her. I swore up and down that I wasn't lying. It wasn't even about escaping my ass beating for lying and she started to realize it. She grabbed me and we ran upstairs to call my aunt. Cell phones were just beginning to be a thing. She asked my aunt where she was and my aunt said everyone left to New York around 7 a.m. and she was at the tailor picking up a dress she left after buying it for tonight's event. Just like my mother already knew, but I had no clue of my aunt's plans. She asked my aunt if she had seen me this morning as she turned to look at me with her squinted eyes. My aunt said no. I flipped. I yelled loud enough for my aunt to hear me over the phone. Tia, you saw me. I saw you in the dress, the red one. It was thin. You kissed me goodbye. You said blockbuster. My mum doesn't believe me. I wasn't sure what I was afraid of now. The confusion of who I was actually talking to down there or my mother about to beat my ass for lying. But I think we all had a sinking feeling in our gut at that moment. At this point, they're both shaken and confused because they know she was gone before I made it down there. But I had a description of her dress and makeup like I was staring right at her. She bought that dress in New York a week earlier and left it there to be fixed. No one ever saw this dress except for her and the tailor. We've had minor things happen in this house before. Things move, lights go on and off, but this? This was beyond anything anyone had ever experienced and it was coming from a kid, not the adults. We couldn't explain it. My mother begged my aunt to come back home and not attend the event that evening. She refused because it was her husband's family thing but agreed to not have a single drink and check in every hour or so. When this happens in my culture, it's called la desperidida or the goodbye before departing from this world. We were afraid my aunt's soul said goodbye to me before it ever happened. Thank goodness nothing ever did happen. It's about 18 years later and she's still here with me celebrating every holiday and event. She's my only aunt. I think an angel sent a message through me that only my aunt would have understood or something. A warning of some sort. You never know what people are thinking or going through or whatever. Maybe it was a warning. Maybe it was nothing. I'm glad it happened though. To this day, I still feel the kiss on my cheek. It just felt normal. Just to know I felt it at all is what bugs me the most. You can see things all day, but when you physically feel something you can't explain, freaky. My first experience was a UFO sighting at six years old during summer vacation. I'd recently made friends with a local kid in my neighborhood who was a little older than me and we hung out almost every day that summer. I believe it was August that this happened. We were walking to my childhood home for supper and we got to my yard. We decided to stop in my yard and look at the clouds for a bit because we had some time to kill before supper. So we sat on the lawn and watched the overcast sky and talked. I know it wasn't long after we started looking up that we saw this large object, very low in the sky, silent float overhead. It's hard to describe what it looked like. I thought it might have been a satellite. It looked like a ball with one large wing-like piece coming out of it, and it was spinning with the ball staying in the center and the wing moving around the outside. Again, I thought it was a broken satellite that was coming down and crashing. In my mind at the time, that seemed impossible. It almost filled the sky as it went overhead and it seemed like it was going to crash in the woods behind my house. We didn't hear a crash but we decided we had to go check it out and see what happened. I can't remember anything after walking into the woods. Next is an odd experience as a kid that I don't remember really but lasted till I was around 11 years old where I would tell my mom about people I was seeing in my room all the time and I was usually quite scared at night. My parents took me to a lot of therapy and stuff, assuming something was wrong with my head and that I just needed help, but almost every person I spoke with never had an answer and just recommended someone else I should go see. While I don't remember much of these experiences, 
I do remember waking up upside down in my bed multiple times after having horrific dreams. And I knew I didn't go to sleep like that. Then, when I was 13, I became close friends with a kid in my class who was fairly wealthy. And I would spend most weekends at his house. But his house was weird. He lived way out in the middle of nowhere. And his family had a massive home with the entire ground floor being their business. Which was a retirement home with around 30 rooms. The place was like a resort with pools and trampolines for us kids and tons of beautiful landscape work. But many times we had weird things happen at night. Laying on the trampoline at night and seeing odd lights in the sky, strange flashes, finding odd things in the woods around his home, strange visitors at night, all kinds of stuff. But by far the oddest thing was one night we were hanging out in his sister's room and I left her grab something from the guest room. And when I came out, I could see into the kitchen. I saw a tall person in a white nightgown with long grey hair, standing by the phone, looking like they were reading the notes written there. Then they turned and walked deeper into the kitchen out of my view. We were home alone, and I was wondering who it was, so I walked into the room to see. And the room was empty. There was nowhere they could have gone. I was pretty freaked out by this, but when I told my friends, the only one who believed me was my friend who lived there. He told me it sounded like I saw Gwen, a woman who had passed away the week before and would always try to come upstairs into their home. The next few years were quiet as I became a teenager who was out partying a lot, until I eventually went down the dark road of my addiction for a number of years. In my early 20s, I went to rehab and over a few years eventually cleaned up. I had moved back in with my parents eventually, around 2014, and one summer night we had a fire outside, and around 9.30 we went to head back inside, but me and my father stopped on the back deck to have a smoke. Now the past two or three months before this night, I had become entrenched in UFO topics again, reading as much as possible and watching the sky every night when I go smoke to see if I could catch anything, but I hadn't seen anything convincing. But this night, as me and my dad talked, my dad cut me off mid-sentence with a look, what's that? I turned my head to see a large black triangle with a solid white light in each corner slowly glide out from behind trees and watch it silently drift in front of the moon until it went behind more trees on the other side of our property. After talking to my father more, who has worked on aircraft for nearly 40 years and know pretty much everything in our local skies, he said he had seen it rise up vertically before it started to move forward, like it had just lifted off the ground like a Harrier jet, but it was totally silent and it was so close we really should have been almost deafened by it if it was a traditional craft. My father had never believed in UFOs and hated when I talked about them, but that night changed everything for him. Now the rest of my experiences are dreams and I know the rules and don't put too much faith in dreams being much more than chemicals in the brain. But that said, I've had some weird shit happen that I'm still freaked out about. Firstly, being a kid, I would often dream about the future, and I can remember multiple occasions of recognising the moment I had dreamed this, and then predicting what was about to happen. Like picking up the phone because I knew it was about to ring. But this other dream in particular just seems too important not to talk about because I think about it at least once a week. Not long after the UFO sighting, I had a dream where I was a kid again, playing at the house I grew up in, and I was with a little girl who wasn't anyone I knew as a kid or at any point in my life. I can remember feeling so happy and so much love from her, and we were just playing in my yard. I remember telling her how great she is and that I loved her and everything seemed to stop. And she locked her eyes with me and began to explain how she is love. But to truly love and appreciate her, I need to also love her opposite, fear and pain. Because without them, she doesn't exist and she needs them. I just felt this powerful understanding and like she was trying to make me understand how important contrast is to life and existence. And that you can't have one thing without the other, so you need to appreciate both. I struggled to believe this was an idea I had in my own head, because I still struggled to comprehend it. Right after she finished telling me this, I woke up. Not long after this, I moved out and went back to school. I had an apartment in a city and things were going well. 
and I hadn't thought about any weirdness in a year or more. One night though, I woke up in the night, but it was unlike any other time I've woken up. It was like I was frozen, and I've never before or since had sleep paralysis, but it was like I could just slightly open my eyes. As I did, I saw this small red point of light float into my room through the window and come up to the side of my bed. Then I fell back to sleep. It was only recently that I saw an abduction story where someone talked about the same thing, seeing a floating light come into their room, and in hypnotic regression they said it was an alien, but I don't know if that's what I saw. That last experience was about four years ago, and not much has happened since. I have the, say, I have the odd strange dream now and then, but nothing as vivid as previously mentioned. I'm not sure how much of what any of this means, or what it was, and I tried to stay fairly open to any explanation, including incredible and totally normal ones. But I find it strange whenever I meet someone who's had zero experiences that they'd consider paranormal when it seems like I've had more than I can recall.